you son of a you little fucking go back to where you're from racism surrounds us i live in canada i don't live in a terrorist country why is there so many turbans? Easy to spot when it's overt like this and spread on YouTube. Why you foreigners come over and you speak your goddamn Chinese? But it's also subtle in our daily lives. Different races can be treated differently, say looking for apartments or followed while shopping suspected of stealing. In your life, have you ever been followed in never, the store? Never in my whole life. How about you? I've been followed a few times. Yeah? Stores, yeah. And you? Oh, heck yeah. Of course. <laughs> Let's take a selfie. We've asked three friends to help us with an experiment. Leland DeLorme, Rory McCusker, and Mark Sims. Like three days after Christmas, I was called a nigger. Really? Yeah, just walking out of Safeway. It isn't always that obvious. The thing is, yeah, in America, they do it right to their face. We just do it in a more friendlier way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Using hidden cameras. No one's ever gonna. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that is so awesome. We're preparing for a cross-country test. I'm good. The three guys are very similar, all born in Canada, all about the same age, but their skin color is different. Leland is First Nations, Mark of Jamaican origin, Rory descended from Scots. For the next week, we'll be watching for discrimination. Five cities representing a cross-section of Canada. Fredericton, Montreal, Toronto, Regina, and Victoria. I think in Victoria, uh, I think it's gonna be probably both of us. Yeah. Well, I might get the benefit of the doubt in places where these two wouldn't, but it all depends on the person we're talking to, right? First stop, Canada's most multicultural city. We're sending Rory and Leland apartment hunting at four buildings, chosen at random, all run by professional managers. We've trained both to be similar in their dress, demeanor, and questions. I'm just inquiring on uh, one bedroom apartments. At three buildings, Leland and Rory seem to get treated the same. The Center for Equality Rights and Accommodation tested hundreds of apartments in Toronto. 23% of the time, visible minority testers were discriminated against, while the whites were not. Rory and Leland head into the next building, about an hour apart. How are you? Okay, how are you? At this one, same property manager, but two different offers. So, we have two, I have two buildings here. When Rory asks, the property manager sounds more eager to make a deal. This, for example, has dishwashers, newly renovated, Rory is told about two apartments. The only thing I have in there is one bedroom plus dance. But Leland doesn't get the same pitch. He's only offered one apartment. I have one in old for February. It's 1400 It's subtle, but for Leland, significant. Well, he was in a hurry to get me out. Next, we're heading to Montreal. Plenty of time to talk. So here I am, a white guy. Discrimination doesn't come by my way a lot. <laughs> what, what are you feeling inside? Do you feel offended? No, I feel jealous. You know, because you don't get any of the problems that we do. When I was 11 years old, I got I got pulled over, handcuffed, and shot in the back of a police car because they said that I fit the description of someone that they were searching for. But they said that because I wasn't sweating, it wasn't me. And the guy was running from them, and it was hot that day. So that's why they let me go. It's a good thing you weren't sweating. Yeah, it's a good thing I wasn't sweating. Here in Montreal, we're visiting three apartments. At two of them, we see no difference. But at the third, Hello. Hi, Rory is first. Sixth floor, 930. Or I have another one on the third floor that it's not really priced yet, but this should be uh, probably about 900. Now it's Leland's turn. Well, I have uh, one that is February 1st. February 1st, on okay. Sixth floor, okay. going for 930. Leland's only being told about one apartment being available right away. And back at the van, Rory and Leland notice another difference. And one of the apartments is actually a little cheaper for him than it is for me. Yep, she gave him the same room number at 9.30, 
and me that same 309 at 900 flat. Also, she told him he can't move in until March, and she was inviting me to move in February 1st. After stops in two of Canada's most diverse cities, we're heading to one of the least. Fredericton, capital of New Brunswick. Mark will stand out here. The visible minority population in this province, only about 2%. Sometimes when I'm in a store and I, I feel people looking at me, you know, I want to see what I'm going to do. Mark's not alone, feeling targeted as a potential shoplifter. The Human Rights Commission in Nova Scotia reports black and Aboriginal shoppers report being followed more in stores. She's been following me around the store the whole time. There she goes, she thinks I'm stealing. Rashid Polo in Minnesota made videos of what that looks like. They struck a chord, over 30 million views. We want to see if that happens in Fredericton. Mark and Rory will go to similar areas in the same big retail stores for the same amount of time. Okay, perfect. And while they're inside? Oh, look, it's lovely. Yes. Meet Mary McCarthy. Her roots span generations here. Black slaves who escaped to Canada's Maritimes on the Underground Railroad. Mary may not look like much of a shoplifter, but several years ago at a Toronto Shoppers Drug Mart, she was accused of being just that. I became aware of someone standing over me and I hear a voice that says, open your backpack, open it right now. I said, no, I will not open my backpack. I have done nothing wrong. Why do you think that happened? She saw the color of my skin. She was very disrespectful in her tone to me. And I knew intuitively she thought I was a thief. We sometimes hear uh, the term um, driving while black. Do you think there's such a thing as shopping while black? Absolutely. A human rights tribunal agreed with her, ordering Shoppers Drug Mart to pay her $8,000. I was a 55-year-old middle-aged black woman, and I did not deserve that treatment. And I thought, no, I am not going to allow this to be pushed over. What Mary experienced is called consumer racial profiling. And it's not just at Shoppers Drug Mart. Have you ever racially profiled someone? I would say yes. This man works as a security consultant for big box stores. He has to have his face and voice concealed because he's afraid of losing his job. Think that makes you a racist? To a degree, I would say so. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's stereotypes do exist. But these aren't just stereotypes. You're saying they're stereotypes that you think are true. In my experience, it's yes. Good. Let's see what happens with our undercover shoppers. We pick three retailers, random locations, a Walmart, Shoppers Drug Mart, and Best Buy. In most of the stores, we see no difference. But in Best Buy, something does catch our eye. Both Mark and Rory are in the store between 15 and 20 minutes. But as the minutes tick by, this is starting to sound familiar. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Did you feel that it was legitimately trying to help you? No, not at all. I just felt like, you know, here, here it is again, being racially profiled. You know, I'm the black guy in the store. Best Buy tells us they train their employees to be respectful of customers from all backgrounds. But when we show our footage to our security consultant, from what he can see, Mark gets extra attention. It's possible that they, they assume Mark would have a higher chance of stealing. Basically, uh, the, the, the reason for it is to make the person feel uneasy so that, you know, if shoplifting was, you know, in their mind, that they wouldn't do it. Think you might be a racist? Would you take a test to find out? Wow, that's kind of unexpected. This is your marketplace. Are we racist? Most of us think we're a pretty tolerant country, but how well do we really know ourselves? We'll have jokes here and there that might be racist, but other than that, I love everyone equally. 
We just had a little bit, not that much, really. I think we are a very inclusive place. I get along with everybody, talk to everybody, I have friends of every ethnic group. I don't think they're racist. Now, compared to other countries I've been to, uh, Canada's quite tolerant. I personally don't think there's a racism problem in Canada. So you don't think there's a problem with racism? Now we're going to test it. And Leland, Mark, and Rory are first on our list. These guys are traveling across Canada to retail outlets and rental companies to see if they're treated differently based on their race. But right now, we're turning the tables on them, testing their racial bias. Starting the timer now. Good luck with the test. We'll find out how they fare in a few minutes. But first... We're in Toronto at CBC headquarters, challenging you to test yourself. Are you racist? Do you think you have racial bias? I do not have racial bias at all. So we're gonna uh, get you to take the test. Okay. If you can. <laughs> We'd like to think that we treat everybody the same. Wow, that's kind of unexpected. But what about our thoughts that lie beneath the surface, embedded in our subconscious minds? We've called in racial bias consultant Afif Nasif. Not all of our social behavior is done consciously. A part of it is uh, influenced by implicit attitudes or subconscious feelings or attitudes that we are not aware of. Can we talk to you about it over I'm here? I'm really busy. I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> not me. Testing your uh, racial not. bias? No? The signs attract attention. Some people stop to take snapshots. Most just keep on walking. Hi. But Hi. not Sarah. She works here and decides to give our test a try. It starts with a paper survey. She has to agree or disagree with statements like this. If blacks would only try harder, they could be just as well off as whites. They might cover some of their attitudes uh, when they're asked to report them explicitly. Now Sarah moves on to the next level, the implicit association test. You have to make split second decisions on a keyboard, sorting black and white faces, connecting them with good and bad words. It's the mistakes, the hesitation, that reveal prejudiced thinking. About 10 minutes later, Sarah's results are in. Your data suggests a strong automatic preference for European American compared to African American. How do you feel? I mean, I grew up in a really white, dominant, small little town in northern Ontario. Sarah's answers on paper showed very little racial bias. A big contrast from her test results at the computer. Afif says that disconnect is not unusual. You were doing this at a very conscious level, right, okay. whereas this one is teasing out all these subconscious thoughts and beliefs and attitudes that are embedded within you. Call it racism 2.0. Hard to detect, but it shows up in many ways. Jokes, generalizations, backhanded compliments. You're really pretty for a black girl. You should trim your beard, because it's more of a professional look. People would ask me where I'm from, trying to figure out what race I was. Your hair looks great, but it will look so much better if it was straight. Some people tell me it's like, they're, they're like, you sound white. In the case of racism, it has changed over time from going to more overt forms in historical times to becoming more subtle nowadays. Anthony can relate. He often wonders if there are hidden meanings behind some comments. I've met people before who say, I'm, you know, I'm an open book, but then they do things that you like, you know, you look at them kind of funny, like, <laughs> okay, why did you do that? Or why did you say that? He'll be taking our test next. Your data suggests little or no automatic preference between African American and European American. What do you think? I, I would say it's, that's accurate. The same vibe you give off to me is the same vibe I'm, I'll give back to you. So that's where I live my life. So what about Leland, Mark, and Rory? It was a cool little test because it confused your brain and made you think. It made you just respond automatically. I'd love to tell you my results. I just, I don't really prefer you. <laughs> just a little prefer him than you, sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, your data suggests a little to no automatic preference between African American and European American. Your data suggests a strong automatic preference for European American compared to African American. 
Your data suggests a moderate automatic preference to European Americans compared to African Americans. I think that's pretty accurate. Honestly, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with my results big time. Like, you, no, one, you, no one wants to see that. For Rory, a sobering moment. For Joy in Toronto, a surprising reveal. Your data suggests a slight automatic preference for African American compared to European American. What do you think about that? <laughs> Um, we, wow, I'm married to a European-American, as British as they come, so he's gonna be like, right, my luck's out, you know? She's surprised. Will you be? Take the test at cbc.ca slash marketplace. And think this is just a coincidence? Being followed and it just gets to me. He grabbed me here, pulled me back, pushed me out again. From coast to coast, this is your marketplace. I'm Connie Walker in Regina, the heart of the prairies. It's also home to Rory, Mark, and Leland. Whew, welcome to Regina. It's like minus 40 something. <laughs> Back in the Queen City, it's cold. We're traveling across the country with these guys on an undercover mission. When you're shopping or looking for an apartment in Regina, does the color of your skin matter? The natives in this city are treated like shh, crap, literally. No matter what you do. Another Indian did this, another Indian did that. Regina has one of the biggest Aboriginal populations in the country. And these guys have heard every negative stereotype in the book. When I first left, uh, Toronto, one of my friends told me not to date a native Indian girl. You'll eventually run into this in Regina at some point. Uh, you know, na native, the natives are lazy, they get money from the government, none of them work. How would you describe that relationship and the way the tension plays out here? Um, it's uh, segregation. People, people... Uh, it's a segregated society. It really is. So how will those racial undercurrents play out? Posing as married young professionals, all three guys are attractive rental candidates. We're sending them into three different apartments, each one run by a property management company. Leland, our indigenous tester, goes first. Hi, I'm just inquiring if you have any one bedrooms available. Okay. Next, the rental agent greets Mark, a black Canadian. I just wanted to talk to someone about the uh, rental. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, do you have any one bedrooms available? Yeah. But look at how she greets Rory. My name's Rory. Hey. Maggie, nice to meet you. Asks his name, shakes his hand, a subtle difference. It could be that Rory seems more outgoing. I'm a pretty friendly guy. I'm sure that's helping me out when I go into these situations. All three end up getting the same offer, but moments like this don't sit well with him. You know, it's, 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 it's tough to um, argue that it isn't because I'm white that I've been treated this way. And it makes me feel awkward with the other guys as well. It does make me feel almost like I should apologize but Rory says standing up and confronting discrimination is not easy. You almost have to pick your battles a little bit because you, 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 can't, you can't just be this social justice warrior that goes around correcting people at every turn. So sometimes you do have to tolerate that behavior a little bit. One woman who refuses to tolerate it is Bev Ann Fox. She was shopping with her grandson at Walmart. When we were leaving the store, the uh, alarm went off. She says she was accused of shoplifting and physically accosted. He grabbed me here, pulled me back, pushed me out again, grabbed me again, and held me, like just by my coat, like just so, like rough. That experience shook her, but Bevan says she was more worried about how it affected her grandson. It's upsetting. So I, I said, are you okay? And he said, um, yeah, I'm fine. Let's just go cook them. 
So I said, I'm, gonna, I'm not finished. I will deal with this tomorrow. So she filed a human rights complaint. Walmart discriminated against me on the basis of my race or perceived race. Yes. That's what you think happened, it was yes. racism. That's what I think happened because while I was being searched, other people were going through that were not First Nation and the alarm was going off and they weren't stopped at all. Walmart tells us they have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to monitoring customers based solely on their race. What Bevan says happened to her is called consumer racial profiling. Now let's see what happens when Rory, Leland and Mark get wired up and go into stores in Regina. Each tester is instructed to browse for 15 to 20 minutes. At the first two stores, no difference. Now we're putting shoppers drug mark to the test. Mark doesn't notice any eyes on him while shopping. Neither do we. After 10 minutes, Hello. Rory is approached by an employee. Just browsing, browsing the men's uh, fragrances there. I did, definitely did get those eyes from that, that woman at the, at the cosmetics counter, and she did call another person over right after I had left. It's not that uncommon, though, for them to ask a guy in the makeup section if they need some help, Totally, though, right? especially if I'm littering around the same shelf for about two minutes. Now watch what happens when Leland walks into the store. Within one minute... This is the first, but not the last time, this employee checks in on Leland. A minute later, there she is again. Leland stops to examine the baby food in aisle five. That's when he hears an announcement on the store intercom. Seconds later, the same woman appears. In under a minute, she walks by the aisle three times. And her coworker twice. A minute later, she's back. Leland goes into another aisle, and seconds later, spotted again. You can see both employees hovering near the end of the aisle. Scanning and watching. And when Leland leaves, so do they. Within 15 minutes, Leland encounters this man seven times, and this woman eight times. Just coincidence? Leland doesn't think so. He's been through this before. It's definitely because I'm brown. Are you surprised you experienced that in Regina? No. Regina is a very racist city, I'm sorry to say. I am not shocked at all, but it still pisses me off. We tell Shoppers Drug Mart about Leland's experience. Shoppers say allegations like these are taken seriously. They're investigating. We arrived very shortly. We're back on the road, heading west to Victoria. We've seen that skin color can make a difference in the way you're treated by big retailers. What will happen when we go undercover shopping in Victoria? Yeah, everything was good. I, I didn't have any problems at all. The retail test in Victoria, it's, uh, I don't think we stood out much at all. Yeah, I concur. Next, the guys go apartment hunting. They go to three different buildings. At the first two locations, nothing stands out. And how much? How much? It's 775 plus the hydro. It's 775 plus the hydro. Basically, it's 775 plus the hydro. But at this apartment, Leland speaks to a different agent at the same building. Okay, 1360. 1360. 1360. $10 more a month. Not much, but one thing we've learned from this cross-country experiment, even small gestures... Maggie, nice to meet you. ...can have big meaning. 
These experiences are making Rory re-examine his own past. It shames me to admit, but I can remember in high school, a couple Native guys were, they were always getting bullied. And, and it was, it was not, not, you didn't have to do this to fit in, but it certainly made you feel like one of the cool kids to, to join in and, and give these guys a hard time. And I remember it, I, I, I regret it. You want Canadian people to give money to terrorism? Is that what you want to do? Are you ready to face racism? I am the minority. I'm the one who's come to this country to like basically just terrorize you, right? Talk about this on Twitter. We're using the hashtag face racism. Marketplace like you've never seen it before. Meet Shireen Hampton. I'm cold <laughs> uh, and I'm nervous. She's an actor. She's never played a role like this before. We're asking her to collect money for Syrian refugees. The only thing that's going to change is what she's wearing. A headscarf known as a hijab and a face covering, the niqab, both worn by some Muslim women. You've seen the news. Since the attacks in Paris, a string of hate crimes against Muslims. A mother on her way to pick up her kids at school, beaten and called a terrorist. Police are calling it a hate crime, a mosque deliberately set on fire. Another Muslim woman harassed on the TTC. It's rush hour in the morning and not one person felt the need to step in. At the same time... Welcome to your new home. Thank you. We make headlines around the world for welcoming thousands of Syrian refugees. I've always felt safe here, but again, I'm not walking around wearing a hijab. Our actor is not a practicing Muslim, but she has family members who are. So this experiment is personal. Hi there, folks. I'm raising money for Syrian refugees. We want to see if what she wears affects how much people donate. Anything helps. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I really appreciate it. She's on a busy Toronto street corner. Evening. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. In the first hour, 20 donations, 77 bucks. We'll be donating all the money to support Syrian refugees. Now watch what happens when she puts on the hijab. Hi folks, I'm raising money for Syrian families. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Hi there, I'm raising money for Syrians in need. Oh, and I'm gonna raise some money myself. It's a good cause, I'm not gonna give Thank you a lot Thank you, now, that's fine, anything really a, helps. It's a great cause. I really appreciate it. She collects more in a hijab, $88. But that's not all. Our hidden cameras, catch this. Hi, sir, I'm raising money for Syrian families that are in need coming to Canada. You people would be by guns and bombs. That's enough. Well, you know what to do. Our actor is stunned. That's a terrible thing to say. Now she tries the same test in a niqab. Two minutes in. Hi, sir. You're about to kill me said, I'm about to kill him. And again. Hi there, I'm raising money for Syrian refugees coming to Canada. He said, no fucking chance. Not only does our actor get the most offensive comments wearing the niqab, she also collects much less. $51. It made me feel bad for, for women who truly get those comments. I can only imagine how many times it happens to them on a regular basis. Shireen Ahmed gets it. Ready, Ready set, 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 go! Mother, writer, community organizer. Good job, Mustafa, you're such a boss. Born and raised on the East Coast, but her nationality still questioned. People say, go back to where you came from. I'm like, where, Halifax? She's heard it all. We warn you, the language is strong. Camel fucker, terrorist, towel head, rag head, is very common. 
the first time that someone had ever said that to me, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh my God, they're talking to me. And that's not really a great feeling. It's really crappy, actually. She doesn't want to be seen as a victim, but says it hurts more when no one helps. The worst part is not only being the victim of that type of verbal attack or physical attack, but it's being isolated immediately after. Experiences like Shireen's inspire this next experiment. What are you doing? Oh, I'm raising money for Syrian refugees. We're kicking things up a notch, using our hidden cameras to see what it takes for you to stand up against discrimination. Well, I believe they need our support, and um, I want to help so them. You wanna, so you want to support terrorism? Is that what you want to do? That's Austin. He's another actor we've hired. We've written his script based on our interviews with Muslim women who have been attacked in public. You know they're all terrorists, Excuse right? Me? Yeah. Will you take a stand when it counts? You want Canadian people to give money to terrorism? Is that what you want to do? Why don't you go back to your own country, huh? Excuse me? You know what? This is Canada, okay? We don't wear whatever the hell that thing is I'm in your Canadian. Head. No, you're not. Some people turn to look, but still walk by. We watch from our vans. You are not a Canadian. I'm Canadian. What? It doesn't take long. Our first intervention. Stop, because I will call no the cops on you. What, what's Thank the problem? You. You're harassing this woman, man. We're going in. This is a social experiment. These two are actors. You two stepped in. You're getting emotional. Tell me why. Going through your mind. I just didn't want to see somebody treated like that. I have small town values, and I guess like, it just shocked me to see somebody treating somebody. It doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. What was running through your mind when you were watching this, Bella? I couldn't stand it. I don't. I don't understand how people can get so rude. We set up again. You're trying to bring more terrorists into the country? Is that what you're doing? No, not at all, sir. That, that's not at all what's happening. Well, I um, think that's what, it, that's what it looks like to me. Why are you being so aggressive to her? I'm, are I'm, you trying to tell her that she's bringing terrorists to the country? Yeah. Well, I don't believe that you're right, and she's standing alone, and it's not fair for a man to yell at a woman. Watch what happens this time. OK, he's doing this again, heading over to Shireen. You don't look like a Canadian to me. I am Canadian. No, I was born you're not and a Canadian. here. I'm a Canadian, OK? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm just speaking my mind, OK? Yeah, it's disgusting. I'm going to the teeth, I swear fine, to God. It's, it's time for us to jump in. Okay, Asha, let's go. Watch the door. We're going. We've spoken to some Muslim women who tell us they hear those things yeah. in real scenarios. You two spoke up. What made you want to get involved? Because I do hear that kind of stuff sometimes, and I'm too afraid to say anything, because people who think that way are insane, and you don't know what they're going to do yeah. and what they're capable of. I'm so happy that he stood up with me, because <laughs> yeah. um, we talk about stuff like that all the time and how much it bothers us. What do you say to people who don't intervene, Who walk right by. But they're part of the problem. Like, how can you treat other people like that? It's amazing that you're sticking up for people, and it's the Canadian way. I agree. Yeah. We repeat our experiment five times, and each time someone intervenes. Didn't, didn't mean to upset you. And I'm not really a racist, horrible person. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, thank you for not being an asshole for real. All right. <laughs> As for Shireen, she says it's empowering to see people take a stand. When people react, I don't think their background or their race or their religion matters. It's just, you just feel that support and that solidarity. Having a last name like a Hukumansa, they're gonna think that person's foreign, they can't really speak English. What's in a name? Time to find out. It's pretty sad that a name would be looked at first before qualifications. The Real Deal, this is your marketplace.
As we cross Canada, we're confronting some big issues, sometimes uncomfortable. Can your name and your race hurt your search for a job? That question is bringing us to the University of Toronto. We're meeting the Smiths. Neil Smith. Alison Smith. Anne Smith. Sarah Smith. Jill Smith. Emily Smith. Brett Smith. Jeff Smith. Brandon Smith. Confused yet? Well, all those names are fake. They're real ones, a bit more connected to how they look. Michelle Sanga. Alia Utter. Karuna Segal. Lakshani Ganeshilingam. Sharissa Pokumensa. Yoyo Sen. It's Daniel Longu. Salim Yunus. Idris Amini. Intahan Hanen. They all have an interest in modern prejudice and are part of a class that studies it. Some have lived through it. Okay, which of you in your entire lives to this point feel like you have personally been the target of prejudice or racism. So we're going to try an experiment. On the job market, do ethnic sounding names get fewer callbacks? OK, so what are the jobs you're applying for? Most of them are receptionist or administrative assistant based. Our 10 students are each applying for 10 jobs, but with both their real name and their alias. Their resumes are otherwise very similar, though some details have been changed. You really work at The Gap. Your yeah. resume says mm -hmm. The Gap. And the alias, just so it's not exactly the same, says yeah. you work at Banana. OK. <laughs> so what do they think will happen? I think that my alias name will get a faster response yeah. uh, versus my real name. Uh, what do you think people believe if they see a name that sounds ethnic? Having a last name like a Pokumensa, they're going to think that person's foreign, they can't really speak English, or maybe they're going to have a hard time adjusting to the position. A similar experiment in the U.S. found white-sounding names get 50% more callbacks than those associated with African Americans. Will our students get similar results? While the resumes go out, we look for solutions. How are you? Good. And that's brought us to the Toronto Symphony. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. You can't miss the diversity among the musicians. But check out the symphony in the 70s, mostly male and very white. Everything changed the day auditions went blind. It's all about the screen, which hides the person auditioning from the committee hiring for the job. They have no idea who's behind there. The decision's based on the music alone. Not race and not gender. It's had a huge impact from the beginning when the screens came in. Now the orchestra is almost 50% uh, female, 50% male. David Kent is both a musician in the symphony and its personnel manager. There are a large uh, a component of some uh, uh, visible minorities now in it. Now, that would it have taken place without the screen, we, we don't know, of course, but uh, I have a feeling it, it has had a strong impact. What goes around comes back around, hey. The popular show The Voice does it too. Judges can't see the singer. And it's not just the music world. Law schools have largely stripped names from applications and assignments and exams too. It's called blind recruitment and assessment. Hey, how are you? Ahmed? David. Yes. Yeah, really good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Ahmed Hussein remembers it from his time in law school. What do you think about the idea of blind recruitment? It intrigues me, and I think it's the kind of thing that uh, would go a long way. Now, here's the thing about Ahmed. He can do something about it. He's a new Liberal MP. You can't say objectively that the Federal Civil Service looks like Canada. No one can. So if blind recruitment, if we try this out, and it makes a discernible difference in its, its representation of Canadian society, then I think it's worth it. Ahmed's boss, the Prime Minister, made a point of boosting numbers of women and minorities when he created his cabinet. Uh, a cabinet that looks like Canada. The changing face of Canada is well represented at this University of Toronto classroom. It still looks pretty old-fashioned by today's standards. 
Professor Michael Inslick's course about modern racism. I think 40, 50 years ago, one could express overt uh, hostility or overt antipathy towards a group. No, I'm not going to allow a, a black person into my golf club. And you politically can't say that anymore. No, you politically can't say that anymore. You'd be ostracized, but, but it's not like people are free of those attitudes. No. If we know what the problem is, what's the solution? I actually think, you know, uh, what's happening in, in a city like Toronto and Vancouver and maybe Montreal to some extent is a, a natural experiment, if you will. So actually having groups being in contact with one another. So my classroom, my classroom is like a United Nations. It's all different yeah, kinds totally of... Yeah, totally multicultural. Yeah, very, yeah. very multicultural. And people are sitting side by side. So the idea here is not just being exposed, but also becoming friends. The results are in for our resume test. So which name did better, their real names or the fake name? Any predictions of what happened with the resume test? I think the Western name got a lot more attention. OK, the Western name did get more attention. It's pretty sad that a name would be looked at first before qualifications. Do you think that's racism or bias? Yeah, yeah, I do. But in our test, only Daniel got more responses for his white name than his ethnic one. Some students got no response at all, while others got the same number for both their fake and real names. I'm personally surprised. You assume there will be bias mm -hmm. from an employer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Just because what I've experienced and the people around me have experienced, we shorten our names to get a better response or more responses. I honestly was not expecting there to be much of a difference between the names. I think there is a bias more when people see you. And what is it that they see? I'm the brown kid with the turban. I am the minority. I'm the one who's come to this country to like basically just terrorize you, right? To fight discrimination, the British government just instituted blind recruitment for its civil service. MP Ahmed Hussein thinks Canada should too. This is something you see value in. Absolutely, I do. As you say, if it was good enough for you in law school. It should be good enough for the federal civil service. So what have we learned? I don't want it to have to be that we have to cut out your name just to give you a fair chance. I want my name to be there because I'm proud of my name. Racism can be blunt. And when it is, we've seen Canadians stand up to stop it. Stop because I will call no the cops on that. you. In the most everyday of places, it strikes at long-held beliefs and trust. That's the way some people are, and I had to deal with it my whole life. The past hour has been a journey of learning. For all its multiculturalism, Canada is still a work in progress. Those who fight bias are in our government. I urge this house to look into embracing name-blind recruitment right here in Canada. Among friends, in our classrooms, on our streets, they're us. We are all valuable, intelligent human beings, regardless of the color of our skin, our sexual orientation. Um, I mean, people matter. We all matter.